Welcome and thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. Uh, my name is Garth Wilson. I'm the minister of Sandown Road Free Presbyterian Church in East Belfast in Northern Ireland. And your minister, the Reverend Paul Ferguson, has asked me to share with you a word of personal testimony, how the Lord saved me and how the Lord also then called me into full-time ministry. But before I share with you a few words of testimony, I want to read to you from the Word of God and the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10. And if you have a copy of the scriptures, I encourage you uh, to read along uh, with us. Romans chapter 10 and the verse number 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? that is, bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. We'll end there at verse 13. And we pray the Lord will bless the reading of his word. Let's just have a word of prayer before we come to a word of testimony. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless, Lord, this testimony, uh, Lord, to hearts today, Lord, encourage and challenge us through, Lord, the account of saving grace. And Heavenly Father, we pray you be pleased to take all that is of thee, and Lord, use it to thy glory and to thy great honour. Lord, help us just now, in the Saviour's name we pray. Amen. Romans chapter uh, 10 and the verse 10 says that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that's just what I want to do for a little time uh, today, to confess my salvation and to acknowledge what the Lord has done for me. And I was brought up in a town called Oma, which is out to the west of uh, Northern Ireland, out to the west of our province, brought up in a saved home. My parents were saved, grandparents were saved, and many in my family circle know and love the Lord. And you could say that from the earliest days of my life, I was bathed in the gospel, always sent along to the meetings in church, sent along to uh, children's meetings, missions that were on. We were always there. And I am thankful uh, for parents who instilled within me a love for the house of God and a love for the things of God. And so I was always under the influence of the gospel, heard faithfully the preaching of the gospel, uh, both from my ministers and also from Sunday school teachers, children's workers, youth leaders, who faithfully taught the word of God. And so from a very early age, I realized that I needed to be saved. And one thing that always concerned me was the fear of dying. I knew I wasn't saved. I knew my parents were saved. And I knew that I wasn't saved. And I knew that because I wasn't saved, then I wouldn't be in heaven because I knew the scriptures and knew the uh, simplicity of the scriptures. That if I wasn't saved, I would never be in heaven. And so that always concerned me as a young child. And it was then on the 30th of March, 1983, that the Lord did a work in my heart. An evangelist uh, by the name of Mr. Sam Houston was doing door-to-door -door work in the Oma area. And he was staying with my grandparents for that week. We were off school that week, and on the last day, the Friday, that he was doing the work, he spoke to myself and my brother Mark uh, before he went out to go on the doors, and just very simply asked us the question, 
were we saved? And we answered and we said we weren't. And he said, would you like to be saved? And having been concerned about the things of salvation, then I said, and my brother Mark said as well, that yes, we would like uh, to be saved. And so he took Mark and myself into the room, my grandparents' home, and there he led us to the Lord. And as a child of seven, we very simply asked the Lord into our hearts to forgive us of our sins. You know, that day, while only a child, I have no doubt the Lord saved me. I knew that there was a difference, a change in my life. That fear, that concern that I had was gone. And I knew that the Lord had saved me. I had a great peace in my heart. I knew there was something different. And I'm thankful uh, for our brother Sam Houston for all his encouragement. And also thankful to parents and grandparents who encouraged us in the faith. Sought to live for God as best we could through primary school. Uh, it was a small local primary school, not very uh, many pupils added, and it was a very easy thing to be a Christian there and to live for God there. And then we went into uh, the academy in Oma, and things were different there, uh, mixing with more ungodly people and more the things of the world. And there, yes, there were times I failed the Lord, yet I'm thankful that there were opportunities that he gave uh, to me. And then as I finished school, I started to ponder where I would go, and the Lord opened the door for me to go to Queen's University here in Belfast and to study for a degree. Now, I had never been, really, uh, away from home. Uh, for me, coming from the West, uh, moving to the city was a big thing. And I just prayed that before I would go, that the Lord would give me Christian friends, Christian company, because I knew that was going to be very important in my Christian life. And I'm thankful the Lord answered my prayer. We got involved in a student's fellowship that was run by our denomination. And we got to know uh, many people there and many of those who are still friends to this day. And we're thankful for the Lord answering prayer and giving us that Christian company. I would encourage you, if you know and love the Lord, to seek out Christian company. Seek out Christian friends. Walk with them. Make them your friends and they will do your heart good. Also sought to get involved in our local church uh, back home in Oma, whatever way we could, and was, was also involved in the youth council of our denomination for some 10 years. And during that time, both of time at Belfast and the various works in church, I believe the Lord was preparing me. I can look back on it now and believe the Lord was preparing me for Christian work and full-time service, although I didn't know it at that time. I then met my now wife, Rachel, and we got married in 2000. And we're thank I'm thankful for the Lord, how he gave me a wife that knew and loved the Lord, and has been an encouragement and support all through my life. When we left Queens, we went into full-time employment, and the Lord opened uh, the doors for us there. And again, we're thankful for how the Lord answered prayer and gave us both jobs uh, after we got married. And we're grateful for all the Lord did for us. But after uh, those that time in employment, I started to become unsettled in work and in business. I had set up my own business after a number of years in financial services, but I had started to become unsettled in it. And I believe, again, the Lord was taking a dealing with me uh, as far as full-time service was concerned. And the more intense this became, uh, the more I started to reason and discuss with the Lord and say, while I believe you may be calling me to full-time service, yet there's no way I could ever do that. And yet the burden did not go away. And so I asked the Lord to either remove the burden or else to confirm the burden through his word, that this would be my, the will for God for my life. And during that time as well, I was asked to take various meetings, not only in our own church, but in other churches as well. And again, all through those years, I believe the Lord was preparing me for future ministry. In March 2007, the Reverend Noel Hughes came to our church to do a week of meetings. And the very first meeting, he spoke on the call of the disciples to leave their nets. And he asked this question. He said, is there someone here 
God is calling you to leave what you are doing and to go into full-time service. That really challenged my heart. Greatly challenged my heart. But still I hadn't a verse. Still I hadn't a clear word from the Lord as to what he would have me to do. And then, just a few weeks later, one morning through my own readings in the Gospels, coming to the Gospel of Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter 1 and the verse 17, where the Lord says to the disciples, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And that morning the Lord spoke to me very directly. And the Lord gave me the verse that I wanted, the verse that I needed in order to take that step into full time service. The Lord, I believe, called me through Mark 1.17, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. All the time I was reasoning with the Lord as to why I wasn't able to do it, and the Lord showed me that he wasn't looking for my ability. He was looking simply for my availability. And he would make me to become that person that he wanted me to be. And you know, I can still remember that day right now. It was very clear because I knew I couldn't run from it anymore. I knew I couldn't reason with the Lord anymore. The Lord had given me a verse. And I knew that if I were to do anything else, I would be outside the will of God for my life. I then started to consider the future and how all this would work out. But just very shortly after that, then we got news that uh, my mother-in-law, Rachel's mum, was to go into hospital for a very serious uh, operation, a stem cell transplant, in order to fight off the cancer that she had been battling for many years. And this was a, a serious operation, and there was a 50-50 chance of survival. And I thought, as I considered that, I can't uh, drop this bombshell on, on Rachel just at the moment, and after considering it, and after seeking the will of the Lord, I left it, and I didn't say anything to Rachel for uh, some time. But it was on the, at the end of 2007, on the 31st of December, that I spoke to Rachel. Her, her mom had come through the operation and is still doing very well, even to this day, to which we're thankful to the Lord and for all the prayers of God's people. But on that last day of the year to, in 2007, I spoke to Rachel about the Lord's dealing in my life and explained to her a little of what the Lord had been saying to me. And she said to me that she knew that one day I would tell her uh, that news. She knew that one day uh, that, she, that I would speak to her about this. And she said that whatever you decide, that she would be behind me and she would support me. And I believe that was another seal on the Lord's call in my life. Then the very next Sunday, which was the first Sunday of the new year, uh, my minister, the Reverend John Morrow, was preaching on the text, Psalm 37 and the verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And as he preached on that text for that new year, he threw out the question, and he was unaware of any of the Lord's dealings in my life, he said, is there someone here who steps the Lord is directly into his service? And we got home from church that Sunday morning. We both looked at each other and we knew now there was no way back. This was the Lord putting his seal on his call in our lives. I then went and spoke to uh, my minister, the Reverend Morrow, about how the Lord had been working and dealing in my life. And he also said that he knew one day I would speak to him about that very same thing. There were plans that we had to make. And because of the situation in relation to my business, I just couldn't simply walk away from it. Uh, the very next day, there had to be plans put in place so that I uh, could bring that business to a conclusion. And so that meant that we decided putting off going into college until uh, the following year. And we applied then for uh, application to Presbytery. Uh, to come under the Whitfield College of, of the Bible in the four-year training course. We were accepted for that. And so our study started in September 2009. And the Lord was good to us uh, through those years of study. They were hard, they were difficult, they were tough. Yet the Lord was very gracious uh, to us through all of those years. And I'm thankful 
uh, to the Lord for the men of God that I had the privilege of sitting under, listening to their teaching and their instruction, who taught us in the things of God, and I pay tribute to them uh, today. So we completed then the four-year course in June of 2013, and we graduated then in September of 2013. And then, just the night following our graduation, received calls to, uh, from various churches, one from the church where I am the minister here in Sandown Road, and another from a church in Muller Glass. And that meant I had to really search the will of God. I had to find out where the Lord would have me to be. And all that night that I received those calls, the Lord brought to my mind the words of Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. You see, I needed to very definitely again discern the will of God for my life. And I needed not only to discern the will of God, I needed to do the will of God. The psalmist said, I will walk in thy truth. I made it matter of earnest prayer, seeking for the Lord's leading and guiding. And he made it very clear uh, that I was to accept the call from the congregation uh, in Sandown Road. Still feeling my inadequacy and my inability, uh, the Lord continued to confirm uh, to me uh, that call and the will of God for uh, my life. And he gave me various verses, one of which was found in Acts chapter 9 and the Apostle Paul, who had just got saved, he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord gave the answer, arise and go into the city. And the Lord very definitely, I believe, burdened my heart for the congregation of Sandown here in the city of Belfast. And so we took up our ministry here in November 2013. There are many challenges, of course, in the ministry, many challenges uh, as a pastor, but the Lord is good and the Lord is faithful through it all. And we're glad to uh, see how the Lord has answered prayer, how the Lord has worked, and how the Lord has saved souls, and how the Lord is continuing to work even through the past number of months and year now of, of this pandemic. The Lord has been good uh, to us, the Lord has been merciful to us as a congregation, and we give the Lord all the glory and all the honour uh, for that. I'm thankful uh, today that I have a testimony. I rejoice this evening that today that I have uh, something to tell of what the Lord has done in my heart and in my life. Maybe you're listening to this broadcast today and you're not saved. Maybe you, like me, being brought up in the things of God, you know a little about the gospel and yet you've never been saved. You've never asked the Lord into your heart to forgive you of your sin then I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to, even as we read in uh, Romans 10 verse 13, to call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Christian life's not the easy life, but it's the best life. The, the assurance of sins forgiven, the hope of a home in heaven, knowing it's well with your soul. There's nothing to compare to the Christian life. And for those that are saved, then I encourage you even in your own life, search out. Know the will of God. Seek the will of God for your life. Walk in the ways that God would have you to walk in. Where you are, seek to serve him. But perhaps the Lord is calling you. The Lord is challenging you about another place of service. We'll go at the call of God. Ensure that you're in the will of God. There's no better place to be than in the very center of God's will. And so I trust the Lord will bless this short word of testimony and that through it that you might uh, realize if you're not a saved today that you might realize that you are a sinner and that you would call upon the name of the Lord, that you would reach out, trust the Savior today. You would turn from your sin and receive Christ as your Savior, that today you would start for heaven and today you would start living for the Lord. And for those that are saved, seek out the will of God Run after God, follow him, and he will direct your paths in the ways that he would have you to go. Thank you for listening uh, to this word of testimony, and I pray that through it the Lord will bless and challenge your heart. Thank you uh, for listening to this broadcast.